In this lesson, we're going to touch briefly on the four different ways that you can adjust a rotor. These come in a couple of different configurations, but the installation or the replacement of the head can affect some adjustment factors on it. So let's go through those real quick. The first one we want to talk about is the arc. Arc refers to the oscillation pattern, the side-to-side -side movement of the rotor as it goes through its pattern. And you can buy rotors in two ways. You can either get them preset at a 360 degree pattern. Some rotors will go the 360 degree, touch the limit, and then come back. And some preset 360 rotors will just continue on around, which is a tiny bit more efficient than it stopping momentarily at its stop and coming back around. Or you can get it in a, an adjustable arc, which I think sometimes runs between 20 degrees and 360. And all of your adjustable um, heads are going to touch the limit and come back. Not all of them, uh, let me retract that, but... Um, a couple of manufacturers give you an extra little deal when you're adjusting the arc setup in it. If you give it an extra click, it's going to cause it to go on around in a continuous 360 degree pattern. So most heads of the adjustable heads that I know of, I think all of them, if you buy an adjustable head, that it's going to come preset at a 180 degree arc. And when you go through the manufacturer's uh, product guide and its you know, performance charts, it's going to give you the flow and precipitation rate based on a 180 degree arc. We'll talk about changing that up a little bit when we get into precipitation rates and so forth, but just enough to know that it comes with a, a, a 180 degree setup from the manufacturer. And we'll go through this on each individual head's um, adjustment factors, but we're looking here at a, a Rainbird 5000 basic head here, and it comes with its own little tool, and it has a place on the bottom of the, the setup of the head here, and a little place where you can engage that flathead screwdriver in there, and then change the arc setup in it. Now, the second factor is the radius, and radius refers to the throw or how far the distance is that your water is going to shoot out from the head. Now this depends on a couple of things. Typically that's controlled by the nozzle that you put in it. So most rotors that I know of come with a nozzle tree that we'll talk about here in a later lesson. And the nozzle that you choose to put into the rotor will determine both the flow coming out of the head and the radius or how far that spray goes. So if you need a further radius, you can put a larger nozzle in there, but be aware that will give you a higher flow rate. But also, you can shorten that radius up by screwing down the screw that is used to hold the nozzle in place. There's a tiny little stainless steel screw here that, you know, for this rain bird, it has a flathead top on it. And if you screw this um, little screw down here to the point to where it impedes the flow of water coming out its little nozzle orifice, that'll effectively shorten the radius, but it also widens the pattern. So most heads, as far as I know of, from looking at the performance data, they're meant to be used at full extension. I've come across some technicians that when they install rotors, they'll always go through and just barely run that set screw down in there where it just barely impedes the flow of water, and they think it gives it a, a better pattern. But actually, if you look at the performance data of the head, it's the most even if it's at full extension, meaning that that set screw isn't impeding the flow coming out of the nozzle. Okay, so the third way of adjusting a, a rotor head is by the tilt. Now, uh, in all, every manufacturer's product guide, it's going to tell you what its angle is 
as the water leaves the head. So for it to achieve the, the 30 feet or 40 feet of radius that it's going to get, it may need to have a 30 degree angle on it so it can shoot the water over to its target. Now that is for getting up o over uh, bushes as well and they'll give you the distance of what size bush at what distance that that head will shoot over. But if you need it to go up and over, you might tilt that head back in the ground some. Or, let's say you have a low-hanging branch, you may tilt that head forward. Now, obviously, that's going to affect the radius that it throws. But, you know, I say many times in, this, in these a series of courses that irrigation is a game of compromise. And unless you're just working out here on a perfectly square or rectangular field of grass, you know, you're going to be dealing with a whole lot of factors, especially in residential maintenance, residential installation, like commercial. There's always bushes and trees that have branches hanging down. And also, you know, you can get low angle nozzles that accomplish the same thing. Let's say that this head is on top of a hill and you don't need that 30 degree arc coming off of here and spraying the water out. In fact, that may make the water more likely to be blown off target by wind or something like that. It, you can use a low angle nozzle which has a much more shallow angle on it and it kind of sprays either flat or slightly down. And so you can change a nozzle out to get it underneath a tree branch. Or let's say that the bushes are growing in front of the head. You know, when you install this, there wasn't any bushes there, but the landscape is changing and being altered as it always is. You know, you may want to raise that head up. So you can either change to a 6 inch or a 12 inch model, or you can put it on a riser here, a threaded nipple, and you can put this up and over if it's behind the bush. I typically don't like for heads to be visible. I like for my irrigation to be invisible more or less, and that's why I like to always keep 6 and 12 inch heads on the truck so that if you know, your, your head is getting blocked out by either a new bush or something that's grown up over time, you know, you can put a larger version in there and get a 12 inch pop up which can get up and over a good medium sized bush or you may need to put it on a riser and get it several feet off of the ground. So those are really the four uh, adjustment options that you have for rotor heads.